Okay, hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. We've been troubleshooting this a little bit, so apologies for that. But for those of you who don't know me, my name's Elena with Forge Breast Cancer Survivor Center. I'm so happy that everyone's here today, and I'm thrilled, as always, to be here with Forge's friend and artiste extraordinaire, Elizabeth Vanderkamp, <laughs> um, who's here to share with us a really exciting, you know, kind of mindfulness prompt for the month. So uh, without further ado, Elizabeth, I pass it over to you. Thanks, Elena, and hello, everybody. It's so lovely to be with you on this gorgeous, in Birmingham anyway, Tuesday morning. So today, we are going to talk labyrinths. And labyrinths, um, here we are, labyrinths are a tool for an inner journey. And they are ancient tools all over the world. The oldest labyrinth that's been found is about 4,000 years old. So it goes back to before the common era. And labyrinths have been built into a famous cathedral outside of Paris, Chartres. You may have seen that one. There are also some that look like the brain. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But there are also finger labyrinths. And that's kind of what we're gonna play with today. So we're gonna actually make our own labyrinths. And I encourage us to be inspired by what I'm going to share with us. And also feel free to go off the, the regular path. And something I'd like to mention is sometimes, and actually in the dictionary, the word labyrinth and maze are interchanged. And that's actually not true. Because if you're a Harry Potter fan, like I am, and you remember the Goblet of Fire where he had to go through this maze, a maze is deliberately designed for us to get lost, to have dead ends, to have to go back. A labyrinth is exactly the opposite. There's no way to get lost in a labyrinth. We're either at the beginning, going toward the center, or at the center going back to the beginning. So I think that's why they're so ancient and why there's such healing in them. There's something that's very reassuring about labyrinths. So this is uh, just my playing around with the labyrinth. These are, these are spirals, but they don't always have to look like that. And on this journey, one of the invitations is that as we walk to the center of the labyrinth, that we release whatever we don't want to carry anymore. So, of course, this is more of a metaphysical than an actual physical thing. But Elaine and I were both just saying that today we feel kind of, eh? and even though we're really happy to be with you, and that maybe that's something to do with the anniversary, the two year anniversary of COVID. And maybe as I walk on a labyrinth or do it with my finger, that's something I'd like to get go of, that feeling, that releasing. When we get to the center of the labyrinth, the invitation is to receive. So we've, we've let go of what we don't want. What do we want? Do we want to be more kind? Do we want to embrace the world as it is? Do we want to spend more time with our friends? It could be anything. And that's another beautiful part of a labyrinth. There's no wrong way to do it. It is not math, it's a labyrinth. And then as we go from the center back to where we began, we're returning and in a sense, we're returning from a journey. And what are we returning with? What, what did we learn or discover or experience? that we like to take with us out into the world. And these are all suggestions, so take them or not. And next, we have some examples of labyrinths around the world. Now this first one is called the Cretan Labyrinth or the Seven Circuit. And I hope you can see it. It looks, it looks kind of like a brain. And the seven circuits, so I start here and I go in, and essentially I'll go around seven times. That, originally, it was designed to look like a model of the island of Crete, but the seven also speaks to the seven chakras of our body. 
And next we have the Chartres Cathedral, which this is in the floor of the cathedral. It's a little more ornate. And below that is the, the simple Chartres. And then we have the Romans. Now, I'm a big fan of Roman history. And they, of course, had to do it their own way, just like they did with everything else. But their labyrinth is divided into four quadrants. And you do each of the four quadrants one at a time. And interestingly enough, that's how the Roman roads were also designed. This is from the Eli Cathedral. As you can see, this one's not a circle, so it's a little different. So if circles aren't your thing, go with this one. And then this one is so, it's such a misnomer, man in the maze. Okay, first of all, it's a human, and second of all, it's not a maze, it's a labyrinth. But that's what it was called, so we're going with that. And this one... It's described as looking almost like a dream catcher. So the idea that on this labyrinth, it catches any negativity and, and doesn't, we don't take it back out with us. So these are some ideas and there's a handout here at Forge if you come, which we would love for you to come and just check these out for inspiration or not. Because what I invite us to do now is make our own labyrinth. Now, I am ready for this, I hope. And so I have this blank part and the labyrinths I just showed you, they're all black and white, but I'm not, I'm more of a color person and maybe you are too, but black and white is just fine. And in my mind, a labyrinth is like a tree, which I know is so unlabyrinth-like, but this is my labyrinth. So I can do it any way I like, just like you. So I think of a tree starting and then a branch going around and around and around and around. But of course a tree isn't just that. I have to have another and line intersect. And then sometimes I like to think of what would I like on my journey? So I would like love and I'm going to put a plug because I'd like a lot of love. Um, I'm going to change colors here. I love trees and I know I'm making a tree but I'm going to give it some leaves. I love new life. I love not always following the path. I really love, and I'm just gonna do this because I can and so can you, messing up and not feeling bad about it. So I, for me, and I hope for you too, part of self-care, if I'm not messing up and I'm not trying. So maybe messing up is okay. And then I'll just try again and maybe I'll, Turn this into something beautiful. And this kind of looks like Christmas, so I'm going to change that up a little bit with some blue. I would love to have, um, what else would I love to have? I love beauty. Um, not sure how I want to show that. Maybe a flower. And maybe some more flowers. And maybe I want to be grounded. I'm going to put some ground. And I also like to swim, so I'm going to dive in. Okay, so clearly this does not look like a labyrinth. But it says something to me. It says, I like trees. I like spiraling in and spiraling out. I like love, lots of it. I like flowers. I like giving myself permission to try and fail and try again. And I like groundedness and water. So we invite you to make your own labyrinth and make it whatever you want it to be. And I highly recommend just Googling labyrinth and looking at the different ways people for thousands of years have used this for healing. 
And thank you so much for being with us today. We'll be back with something, who knows what, something super exciting in May. So happy Tuesday, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.